Is Clem the best player in the world? Has Terran propaganda gone too far? And are IKEA furniture guides getting too good with the help of artificial intelligence? Stay tuned to find out this episode of StarCraft Today. Hey, hey, this is StarCraft Today. This week we had the Champions Brawl between six players, Beyon, Zest, Trap, Rainer, Serral and Clem. Starting in a six player best of one group, Clem ended up getting first place in the group. Got to pick his opponent for the semi-finals, which he picked Serral, then beat Serral 3-0. Just having the guts to pick Serral, I think, says something about the confidence level that Clem currently is on. The other side of the semi-final, we saw Beyond take on Trap. Beyond managed to take out Trap 3-2, which scares me a little bit for the upcoming uh, GSL semi-finals that Trap has. Um, going on in the championship, Brawl finals, Beyond versus Clem. Clem managed to actually take out Beyond, win 5,000 USD and have the title of Championship Brawler in StarCraft 2. This was a winner-takes-all tournament, meaning that only the winner got money. So everyone else that played just uh, well, wasn't a waste of time. They still got to play some StarCraft, but it wasn't brilliant for them. W- what's up, Clem? Nice to have you on. Uh, first first question, or first first of all, congratulations, obviously, on winning the, the Champions Brawl, taking home $5,000. Uh, if, if you think back one year ago, uh, when you got picked up by Liquid, I think in January, together with me, or in February. What what kind of changed since then, uh, playing-wise, for you? Like, why all of a sudden... I mean, last year you lost to... Was it Hurricane? No, you lost to Nice in Katowice. And this year, well, you're basically one of the best players in the world. Like, it's a pretty big difference in one year. Mm, yeah, probably the, the fact that I just went completely full-time on SC2 since, like, one year. And that's also like a, a big change for my my performance probably, and yeah, I feel like I just got better in general. Um, yeah, probably because I got uh, I got full time and yeah, more practice and also with the lockdown, I've been practicing a lot. Um, mm. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it, I guess. Uh, is there? Do you feel any constraints by playing on Europe or not being able to go to Korea and play against Korean Terrans perhaps or Korean Tosses? Because I think especially the Korean Tosses and Terrans are a lot better than their European counterparts. Hmm. It would like it would be nice to go to Korea again, but I actually think it's not that bad. Like if I want to practice TVT or TVZ, I think I can do it very well in Europe. Maybe for TVP it's a little bit more complicated. Like if I play against the uh, top Korean pros, maybe I'm going to struggle a little bit more. But I think it's it's fine. Like you you can you can get to to a very high level with playing in Europe for sure. It's, it's not that big of a deal, I guess. Okay, final question uh, about the new map pool. Uh, I think most people would agree that the new maps are rather good for Terran. Completely broken for Terran. Really? It, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, but I mean, how do you feel about the new maps in general? And I mean, we're stuck with these for at least another season, but we don't know what Blizzard is up to. So perhaps for three more seasons. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, w- will this influence future tournaments? Like, are you happy with the current map pool? Like, is, is Terran looking on the up or what's happening? Mm, yeah, I'm not too sure about the maps for TVP, but at least for TVZ, I think it's, it's like pretty much, or like it's, it's better for Terran than the previous ones. Um, we still have Jaganath in the map pool, but we got rid of like Pillars and some other Zerg maps. I don't really remember, but, and now we have like Blackburn and like these are two good Terran maps. Yeah, I think the map is looking pretty good for Terran, so it's definitely, definitely pretty nice. Last week we had a couple of GSL matches as well. We had Maru versus Hurricane. We had Trap versus Innovation. Both of the ex Jinner Green Wings players managed to make it into the semi final, so that's going to pl- be played this week. Maru versus Trap. We already had our first semi final, which was <laughs> actually an absolute banger. Rogue versus Dream, starting with a, a whole lot of cheese, uh, Proxy Rexes, Nidases. Uh, but later on transitioning into some, uh, it might have been beautiful macro games, uh, which Rogue ended up winning the series 4-3. to three. So Rogue is our first player in the GSL finals, and he will be joined by uh, one of the ex-Jinner Green Wings players later on this week. 
course, this week we also had three more EPT Cups. Starting with the one in America. We saw Solar take out Astrea in the finals. Max Pax actually managed to take out Parting earlier in the tournament as well. So that's, I think, the second time in two weeks or three weeks that uh, Parting loses to Max Pax. Max Pax seems to have a good grip on those Korean tosses. Not quite a good enough grip on those Korean Zergs though, as Solar beat him in the semis and then won the American Cup for Europe. Honestly, do we really need to do this hamster? When is the last time even that that Clem didn't win a cup? I wonder who that legendary player is that won the last cup when it wasn't Clem. That guy must be really cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> for the Korean Cup, we saw Dark take another cup win as well. Dark, uh, after getting kicked out of the GSL uh, and after... Uh, not having a great performance in the WTL, probably thought he needed to show himself once again. Uh, and he did just that, won an EPT Cup, big 10 points for Dark. Now in that final Korean Cup, we also had Zaun making it into the semifinals. Sure, he lost to Dark, but Zaun is a player that we really need to be paying attention to. This guy's a legal graph, looks like a freaking... Uh, exponential function at this point like it makes no sense how fast this guy has been improving um i, I think a year and a half ago the only thing i knew about zaun was that he existed nothing more like he, he was one of those guys that is that is just there and he plays games but nothing else and nowadays he is i think he's a top three protos player and in my opinion he's the protos player with 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 the most potential as well right now he's improving extremely fast he's getting better every single every single day it feels like every week i see him play i'm like oh my god he got better again and i'm st stuck here lagging behind like it's it's it, it's frustrating to see other people be able to do so well but it's also beautiful to see i think he's 23 at this point see this 23 year old protos player make a splash after being in the scene for a very very long time so it's going to be your zoom in of this week my man zaun of course this week we also had the wtl we had uh, six matches as always and we were two games which were very close to being upset good game gaming yes that is an actual team name almost managed to take out kaisi gaming but not quite after cyan took out time two to zero dream picked off a map off of innovation sadly patience wasn't capable of taking a single map off of solar and in the ace match the solid stellar experienced innovation was a little bit too strong for dream the round of four finisher in the gsl the other almost upset was shopify's rebellion versus dragon phoenix gaming boy 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 what a show that was we saw beyond taking a map of Zest, or Zest taking a map of Beyond, however way you want to put it. Cure beating Scarlet 2-0, but then Lambo, good old Lambo, taking out Dark 2-0 in, in my mind, the upset so far in the entire uh, World Team League. Sadly, for Shopify's Rebellion, in the ace match, Beyond did not manage to bring it home, lost to Cure 0-1. Now, as our game of the week, what else could I do than the Romanticide game? between Dark and Lambo. This started with uh, a field all-in out of Lambo. Dark was light years ahead, baneling drops. Uh, I think up like 30, 40 supply Dark was, but then the Mudas came in. They swooped in, banelings joined the fight, and it turned to an, into an absolute slugfest. Eventually, Dark ends up with seven, eight Vipers against 35 Mutalisk, one and a half base mining, and Dark is still trying his best to hang in, but Lambo just a little bit too strong in the end. Takes dark out what a banger of a game that was guys has terran propaganda gone too far as two out of the three new maps are extremely terran favored at least if we have to believe the statistics so far on liquipedia the maps got released three weeks ago but we are rocking 30 percent win rate as protos players against terran on both beckett and blackburn uh, on top of that the tvz win rates also looking pretty spicy around 60 uh, percent on both of these maps atmosphere 2000 seems to be a little bit more balanced where all the win rates are floating around 50 percent um but yeah we we're, we're looking at a, a terran heavy season i can tell you guys that much with the balance complaining out of the way it's time to move on to the clip of the week where this time we see clam but we don't see clam win so enjoy
Hmm. Yeah. That's going to be it for this episode of StarCraft today. If you did enjoy that, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Hit the like as it helps a lot. These bad boys take a lot of effort to produce from our side. So if we get some love for that, that would be great. 